Okay, in this video we are going to take a first dive into Tinkercad and we're going to recreate something that you see here on my screen. Now this is what I call a bag clip and this is a fairly common first project for people learning how to 3D model because it's fairly simple and it builds um, some skills for you in Tinkercad. So let's just take a look at this shape. What it is is a, it's, it's a bag clip and the idea behind it is if you've ever gone into your pantry or cabinet or kitchen and you've had a open bag of potato chips or pretzels or popcorn or something and you roll up the bag you need something to hold that bag together, otherwise it just unravels and everything gets stale, balls out. So this little device is designed so that it slips over the bag once you've rolled it up. So you roll it up and you slip this over and it will kind of hold that bag together. And it's a fairly simple design and something that we can easily create in Tinkercad. So that's what we're going to redesign in this video. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is head up here to Tinkercad and I'm going to click the Tinkercad dashboard, but I'm going to open this in a new tab. So I'm going to right click here and click open in new tab. And that way I can kind of go back and forth between this project and the new one. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click create new design. And then here we have our work plane. Okay, so let's get started with our design. We're going to take a look at this. How would I create this? Well, there's a couple approaches to creating a 3D object or a three-dimensional object in Tinkercad. The first is to create something by adding shapes together. So if you look at this, you kind of blur your eyes, try and get a vision for what kind of shapes are involved in this, putting this together. The other way to think about doing things is not to just put them together, but to use two shapes. One is a, an actual solid and one is a whole, and then putting them together to kind of carve out one shape from the other. So if you look at this shape now, you might be able to see, oh, instead of a number of shapes being put together, maybe there's one big shape and then there's another shape that's kind of carving or cutting out a piece of that. Mm. So that's kind of the approach you, you want to take to any 3D project. Uh, how many things can I put together to make something or it, are there things that I can actually subtract out of something else to make something. So we're actually going to use a combination of the two. We're going to put a couple of things together and uh, make that a complete shape and then we're also going to take something else to remove a piece of this. So we're going to start here on the left hand side and if you take a look here we have this rounded part of our shape. Uh, and if we kind of extended that around it almost looks like we'd have like a whole circle, a, a cylinder if you will, because this is a three-dimensional object so we have to kind of talk in 3D terms. Uh, it looks like a cylinder. Uh, so that's actually what we're going to use first. So we're going to come over here to our new design and you can follow along with me. I'm going to pull this cylinder out and I'm just clicking and dragging that and when I let go uh, it's going to drop right there in my work plane. It doesn't really matter where we work on this. It has nothing to do with the 3D printer itself. Uh, ultimately our goal is to design something that we could 3D print. So where you put this on the work plane really does not matter, but you do use the work plane as kind of a guide for how large uh, your project is in relationship to the 3D printer. The 3D printers that we're using, I don't know what you're going to be using as you work, but in my class the 3D printers we're going to be working with are a little bit bigger than the default work plane. So what you have here is perfect. Try not to make it too big because we try not to print things that are too large, but what we're going to be dealing with here is perfect. Now the one thing I forgot to do, which a lot of people forget to do, is rename your project right before you begin uh, so you know what it is. So I'm going to click on here and I'm going to name this Bag Clip. I'll just name it Bag Clip 2. All right, and we'll just save that. And you can name it just Bag Clip. All right, once we have this cylinder here, I can click and drag and move it around. And one of the other things I can do is resize this. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here a little bit on this. Whoa, that might be a little bit big. So let me zoom out a little bit. You can use these tools or your scroll wheel or your trackpad or whatever you want. Now, as I look at this, it says cylinder, but it doesn't look exactly like a cylinder. It looks like there's like sides on here. If I, if I look at it from the top, there's definitely sides here. This is not a 
this is not a circle, this is a, it's an, a polygon. Uh, so it's more of a prism than it is a cylinder. And if I look over here on my little tool area for the cylinder, we'll see that actually has a property called sides. And right now it's set to 20. Uh, that's how many sides are actually on the cylinder. So we're actually not creating a true cylinder. We're kind of tricking um, Tinkercad into kind of, or tricking us really, into making a, a true cylinder by just giving it a large number of sides. So the more sides we add to this, the more it will look like a circle. So I can actually use this, this slider here to increase the number of sides. And it goes up to 64, which uh, is not a complete circle, but since they're so tiny, it almost looks like it is. And once we 3D print it, it will kind of look like a cylinder anyway, so it doesn't really matter. You could shrink that down if you want, and then you definitely get something that uh, doesn't look like a cylinder. Um, but we're going to scroll this all the way up. Now, qu just quickly, there's bevel and segments. The bevel uh, will allow me to kind of chop off the edges a little bit at the top and the bottom kind of make a cut and the segments has to do with the bevel. The number of segments that I use to make that cut will make this a little bit more flat or rounded. So right now the segments is set to one. If I increase that to, it goes up to 10, you can see that bevel is now more rounded than it is a beveled. So um, I'm not gonna really use that in this project, but figured while we're here, you could take a look at that. Um, so let's take a look at the size. To figure out the size, we can click on the object and then let's take a look at one of these little handles, these white handles that will help us figure out how big things are. So I just hover over it or click it, it will tell me this is 20 by 20 and this is millimeters. It's actually a perfect size. This is exactly how big I want it. Other times you may need to resize it. You can click these little uh, handles to kind of resize things. And then you can also, let's see, you can also type right in these little areas. So if I, now let's just say I had made it 17 by 16, I decided I didn't really want that. I want it to be 20 by 20. I could just click in here. I could type 20, hit enter, and then it would accept that change. All right, so I'll just do that. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I'm going to zero in on the height. So let's click this one, which is up top, and let's just drag that down to six. Okay, good. Now you'll notice that it does change in increments of one millimeter. That has to do with this setting down here at the bottom, the snap grid. If you look at the bottom right hand side of your work plane, you'll see snap grid. And by default it's set to one millimeter. That's going to tell you that everything that as you as you drag things or as you move things along, it's kind of moving it in increments of one millimeter. You can change that if you if you bring this uh, drop down or drop up really, um, and take a look at the different increments. You could see how you could fine tune or just really uh, move things around bigger. So we. We have by default one millimeter, but I could move those in increments of two millimeters or even five millimeters, or I can get really tiny and do a half a millimeter, a quarter of a millimeter, or even a tenth of a millimeter. Um, it's really up to you how you want to do that. You can really zero in on some uh, fine tuned measurements by doing that, but sometimes it can make it even harder, but that's okay. Uh, so we'll just leave that. I'm going to leave that at one millimeter for now, just to make life easier. Okay, so there's a cylinder there, all right? And now let's take a look at our bag clip again. Let's just envision we have a cylinder here, right? And then what do we have over here on the right-hand side? Probably like some kind of a rectangular prism, rectangular shape. And that's gonna be achieved by a box. So let's come over here and let's grab this box and let's drag it out close to the cylinder. All right, now, again, I'm just using the right click here to kind of move around my shape. You can use this box up here to do that as well. And what I want to do is I want to overlap these because you notice here that um, it kind of looks like the box is overlapping the cylinder most likely, right? Yeah, probably overlapping it. So I'm going to move this over towards the cylinder. Now, to do that, you got to be careful here with the mouse. We're not going to be fine tuning this. There are some tools that will help us with this, uh, but we just want to kind of get a good feel for where this is going to be. Now, you can rotate that around and zoom in and kind of see if that looks good. Maybe I want to move that back a little bit. There we go. That looks like it's pretty decent maybe even move it back 
a little bit more. Yeah, it looks pretty good. All right, so in this video, I'm purposely not using some of the fine-tuned tools that are available to me because I just really want you to have the experience of moving things on your own. I can also click on this and use my arrow keys. So while I'm looking at the side, if I click the left arrow, it's going to move that object left. If I click the right arrow, it's going to move that object right. So I could use that. And again, I could fine-tune that a little bit more by using a, a smaller increment. So if I change that to 0.1 millimeter, you notice that as I'm clicking my left and right uh, key on my keyboard, then it's kind of moving those things around. Again, there are better ways of doing that, um, but we just really want to kind of get in the habit of using our mouse and our keyboard right now. All right, now the obvious thing here is that this is too big, so let's move this down to six millimeters. There we go. Again, uh, with the point one, it's a little bit easier to type, so I'll just do that. And now you can see them overlapping pretty well. You do notice that they're two different colors, um, and that's because they just haven't been grouped together. Now, I could certainly recolor this if I want, and now they're the same color, but we definitely see the separation in the shapes. One side note is that the colors you choose here in Tinkercad really don't have anything to do with their end color when you 3D print. In fact, when you download this shape for your 3D printer, none of the color uh, gets saved. Has n There's no color information in there whatsoever. The color is just for you as you're designing things. When you 3D print, then you'll pick which colors you're going to choose to print those things in. All right, so if you want some decent separation of those colors, you can go ahead and just change the color. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this out a little bit, make this a little bit bigger. I still want this to be 20, and let's make it 20 by 40. Again, I've chosen that 0.1 millimeter increment, so it's kind of hard. So I'm going to just type in there 40 millimeters and then 20 millimeters. But you can do that however you wish. And that looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. All right. Now, um, these are right now two different objects. So if I want to group them together, I need to first select them and then use the group tool. All right. So I'm just going to select them in a couple different ways. One way is to just click and drag around everything. Another way is to click individually and then hold your shift key down. And then that will uh, click on multiple things. That can be tough if you've got a lot of different shapes all together. You may end up clicking something that you didn't want to. So it can be a little tricky. So you just kind of have to get a feel for how to select your shapes. So I'm just going to click and drag around everything. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this group tool. To do that, I use Control G or Command G if I want the keyboard shortcuts. Or I can just click this tool here. And what that will do is it will group those together. All right, that kind of looks like our bag clip. Uh, and now all I need to do is cut these teeth out. All right, so these little teeth. So let's do that. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to remove a piece of this solid shape by using another shape. And to do that, we create our shape as a whole. Now, under your basic shapes, you do have two whole shapes already given to you. You have a box hole and a cylinder hole. You can tell that they're holes because they're kind of translucent. But you can turn any shape that you want into a hole. So for example, I'm going to use this box. Okay. And then in the settings, I have this hole feature. So if I click that, it becomes a hole. So you can turn anything into a hole. Right, for right now, I'm just going to keep this solid just so I can look at it a little bit better. And let's resize this to a good size. So I'm going to start the, I want to do one millimeter here again. So let's drag this down to six because that's the height. And then let's make this a little smaller. So I'm going to make this 10 by 10. Now, one of the things you can do also is if you want to resize things proportionally, you want to keep everything proportional, you can hold down your shift key as you click on one of these handles. So if I hold down my shift key here, you'll notice that everything stays proportional as I, I resize that. All right. Uh, but again, it's a little bit easier just to type things when you know exactly what you want. So I'm going to make that type. You know what? I'm actually going to make that 8 by 8. And let's make this height 6 again. All right, so that's the same size. 
All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate this box. So as I select it, you'll see that in addition to the little white handles, I also have this little rotate arrow tool here. And what I can do is click and drag that and it will rotate my shape. And let me just show you that real quick. If I click and drag that, you, you'll see I have this like little compass or protractor and it's going to help me figure out exactly what angle I want. If you need some greater control, some fine-tuned control, just move your mouse away from it. It makes it a little bit easier to control that fine-tuned angle. And if you go really, really close, you'll see that you can actually use these incremental angles, which are fairly common. One other thing you can also do is hold down your shift key, and that's what I'm going to do. And that's going to give me some really common angles to just kind of snap through. So I want 45 degrees, so I'm going to leave that at 45 degrees. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of position this in my bag clip. Okay, so I'm just clicking and dragging and eyeing that up. Again, there's some alignment tools that we can use that we will see later on in some other videos, but we're just kind of getting a feel for this. Now, if you want to jog it left or right, you could do that. You could change the increments, get it perfect for your liking. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the hole. All right. Now, let's group these together and see what happens now. If I group them together, what Tinkercad will do is it will cut that hole out of the, uh, the shape that was also selected. Sometimes if you have a lot going on, it may take Tinkercad a little bit of time to do that, so be patient if you do that. Um, but that's it. And now what I can also do is ungroup that, because I need to manipulate that hole. Um, so let's ungroup that, and now I can get that shape back. And what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this. So I'm going to press Control C and then Control V, and you can see that I get another one here. So let's drag it in. Now where should I put this? I'm going to put it so that the corner of it is kind of in the center of the other one. And one trick I'm also going to use is you can see how I can move it up, down, left, and right. I'm actually going to hold down my Shift key because what that will do is it constrain it just so it's moving left. So I'm going to overlap them a little bit. And now I'm going to repeat that again, Control C, Control V. You can also use the tool on the toolbar. So let's paste that again. You can just do paste because you've got the same object being pasted. And so we're just going to keep doing that, overlapping them. And let's get one more in there. Okay, there we go. Now, let's select all of that again. Let's group that together. And there we go. Look at that. We've got that. And look at our original. Looks pretty close. Looks pretty close. All right, very good. Now, if you don't like how wide that is, you could make those boxes smaller. If you, you want to make it narrower, you can make those boxes uh, a little smaller. Uh, bigger, make them bigger, smaller, make it smaller. Yeah, I think I got that right. All right. And there you go. There is your first 3D design. All right, in another video, I will show you how to export that and what kind of information you need for that.